Hey buddy, Eric with Solobox on the shop today and uh, I picked up some new tools so got a couple more of these it takes two of these to mock up each end of a box before I put the tack welds on and normally I just mock up one end at a time I picked up two more of these so that I can actually clip both ends on before I start uh, tacking so I'm gonna I'm gonna try something new picked up a couple of those picked up uh, this framing square, a miniature one. I use this big one for doing a lot of layout. And so I wanted a small one that I could use with the notcher over there, just to, uh, whenever I have to set that up for certain things, just to ensure the things are accurate. I'll probably end up using this with the bandsaw also um, to ensure that uh, whenever this needs to be at a perfect 90, that it's set correctly. I bought a lot of these little squares from uh, Harbor Freight. I think they come in like a pack of three or four. I actually call them uh, sort of squares, mostly because, well, they're sort of square. And in the world of square, sort of doesn't really, doesn't really cut it. So I know that this is square for sure. And uh, actually I could probably use this to loosen up these are actually adjustable. They've got some screws and stuff on them, so you can go through and, and make them square, but then you're always running the risk of them not staying in square. So I like the idea of this. This here's a little metal shear. This is a tool I've known about for a long time, but I had never used one, and I've always wanted one, but I didn't really couldn't really justify getting one, so I didn't really know exactly what I would use it for. Uh, so I finally have, I had a use for one, and so I decided to pick one up and see how that worked out. And so primarily I got that because with the new layout on the boxes, the interior cuts that have to be made, most of which are done on the notcher to make sure those interior cuts are nice and straight. There's little tabs, little parts that I can't get to with the notcher. This whole line right here, I can't get to that with the notcher without screwing, uh, without getting into the metal here. So I bought that tool in hopes that it will work out really well for making those cuts. So we'll try that out. I'll try making a cut and uh, I'll show you guys what that's all about. All right, so one thing I've already learned about this tool is that it does not like going around corners, which I wouldn't have guessed. Uh, I figured it'd be difficult to make a straight cut, but actually these, they really like going straight. It comes to corners, like right here, I have to angle off a little bit, and you'll probably see me get caught up there. So anyway, put on your hearing protection, you're gonna want it. So yeah, you can probably see that uh, the straight part it has no problem with, but anytime you want to try to make a curve of any sort, it is not happy. Um, Har Harbor Freight did have a second one of these that was shaped a little bit different, and I'm thinking that the other one might be more for uh, going around corners. I don't know that for sure, but I may take a look at, uh, they do have another model, so I may try a different one. Let's try one more cut here.
So yeah, that's that. I mean, I guess it's cut, but I'm not thinking it's real pretty. Maybe I can find a notcher that's got a smaller blade on it where I could do the interior cuts better. I think that that would actually be my preference would be. The problem here is that it's just too long. This is too long, but I could actually maybe buy a second one of these machines and trim it down to where, you know, maybe I've got like three inches of blade and uh, that's all I use and just set up a second one next to it. Cause I definitely don't like, I don't like how this, uh, how this works. It's just not real accurate. So anyway, oh look, here comes Asher. Waves! You gonna wave? You wanna make a robot? You're making a dinosaur. Is it a dinosaur or a robot? Dinosaur. Dinosaur.